have you just given the UGC net exam and are waiting for the result? If yes, then you have found the perfect video for yourself. In this video, I am going to answer some very important questions that students are throwing across me. Questions like, when will UGC declare the last net exam result? My exam didn't go well. What should I do now? Should I wait for the net exam result or should I start preparing for the next attempt? Some might ask, my exam went well, but I'm not sure whether I'll get a GRF or not. I'm confused. What steps should I take now? If you too have such questions crossing your mind, then look no further. In this video, I am going to answer all these questions with the help of five tips. These tips are for people who have recently given the UGC net attempt and are waiting for the result. And the tips are also for those who want to prepare for the upcoming net exam in just three months. Before we dive into this video, I have a quick question for all the English literature fans out there. Do you know what Oscar Wilde, Graham Greene, T.S. Eliot, William Golding, P.B. Shelley, Lewis Carroll, Samuel Johnson, W.H. Auden and the great scientist Einstein have in common? Socho, socho. If you read the life of all these writers, it will not take you much to find out that all these writers were alumni of the famous Oxford University. Oh yes, you got it right. I am right now in this beautiful city of Oxford, which is famously known as the English Athens. Oxford is a city steeped in literary history. It has a rich literary history and has counts in numerous influential writers amongst its alumni. In this video, I'm not just going to take you around this beautiful town of Oxford, but alongside, I am also going to share five extremely crucial trips that will assist you in your journey to prepare for upcoming UGC net exam. Let's begin the video with tip number one. I have been speaking to a lot of students who have recently given the UGC net paper. The students who sat for the UGC net English gave their paper just a week ago. And when I talked to them and asked, what are their plans? What are they doing right now? Most of them unanimously say that they're just chilling around and waiting for the result. And I don't understand why are they waiting for the result and wasting their time. UGC has not given any deadline and they might release the result a month or so later. If that will be the case, how will you prepare for the next attempt? Now you might ask Karpata, I think I did a good job in the exam and I might clear net. Why should I study again? And I would reply, Baba, why not use the next three, four months to polish yourself more and get a GRF next time. Forgive me for being harsh, but guys, chilling around is a pathetic approach any UGC net aspirant can take right now. You have already worked hard for the last attempt. And as the next attempt is just three, four months later, if you work a little more in the next three months, you will be way ahead than your competitors. Competitive exams are like race. Every minute that you waste, you are getting behind from your opponent. Someone else is preparing himself to beat your score in the time that you are wasting. Henry Ford said a beautiful line and I quote, It has been my observation that most people get ahead during the time that others waste. So I would suggest you to be an opportunist right now and start preparing for the next exam from today itself. Before we head to the next tip, let me take you around the famous University of Oxford, which is the highlight of this town. This is one of the oldest universities of the world, opened in the year 1096. Since then, it has been offering some of the finest education around the world. It has not only nurtured the greatest thinkers, but has also shaped the minds of some of the most famous writers. Among the alumni of Oxford University, we have our lovely Dr. Samuel Johnson, 
who attended Pembroke College for over a year before leaving it due to lack of funds. Nobel Prize winner and professor of poetry at both Harvard and Oxford, Mr. Seamus Heaney also stands as a proud alumni of this college. The next one is husband of Mary Shelley, P.B. Shelley, the finest romantic poet. He was quite a controversial figure in his stay at the Oxford University. His vocal atheism ultimately led to his expulsion from the college before he could even get his degree. Now it's time for my second tip, which is to utilize the next few weeks to cover the neglected part of the UGC NET syllabus. Now, guys, you just have given one attempt of UGC NET and I'm assuming that you must have covered portion of your syllabus before sitting for this attempt. Some of you must have covered 50% of the syllabus while others would have completed as much as 70 or 80%. The next UGC NET attempt is just three months away and this gives you a good time frame of 90 days to cover the incomplete syllabus. You must utilize the next few weeks to cover all the topics that you left last time because of time crunch so that in the next attempt you directly hit a GRF. All the UGC NET English students who are watching this video, I would suggest you to go to my website arpitakarva.com and download the list of writers that you must cover in order to ace this exam. This list is available free of cost on our website. You can then take a printout and mark all the writers that you missed out in the last attempt and start preparing notes on all these writers right now. Also, give special focus to the most neglected modules. Module 6, Literary Criticism and Module 7, Literary Theory. Make sure that you cover these topics in detail. They carry a weightage of more than 40% in the paper. By the way, we also offer video courses for both Paper 1 and Paper 2 which is available on our website courses.arpitakarva.com. You can WhatsApp my team on the number displayed on the screen for any further details. I am right now in the campus of Christ Church College. This is one of the most popular Oxford colleges and was founded in the year 1546 by King Henry VIII himself. Do you know that Christ Church is where Alice in Wonderland was born? The fictional Alice was inspired by Alice Little, the daughter of the Dean of the Christ Church in the 19th century. Lewis Carroll studied and taught at the Christ Church College where he met this little girl. By the way, Christ Church is also referred to as the Harry Potter College. Why? Because the architecture of Hogwarts is inspired from this college. This college also has the iconic staircase that was used in multiple Harry Potter locations. These iconic Harry Potter steps are mostly known for the grand arrival of the students at Hogwarts on their very first day. In the Philosopher's Stone, Professor McCognagall stands tapping his fingers at the top of the stairs as she waits for the new students to enter. She then briefs them about the sorting ceremony before leading them into the enormous Great Hall. If you have given the latest NET exam, I'm assuming that you have basic knowledge of the subjects. My third tip will help you to take your preparation to an advanced level, which is to work on your weak areas. Now that you have already given an exam, I'm sure you would be knowing the questions where you got stuck, questions which went over like a bouncer, or questions where you got confused between the options and made a wild guess. Utilize the next three months to sharpen your X and work on all these weak areas so that next time you're super well prepared for the next time. I would also advise you to use the next three months to solve at least 6,000 mock test questions. 
the best way to ace UGC net exam is to do more practice and taking up mock tests will not only boost your confidence but will help you revise topics. If you want to be a top scorer in UGC net exam, then kickstart your preparation today with India's first unique and customized test series for UGC net aspirants available only at arpadakarva.com. We offer free test series for UGC net paper 1 and paper 2 English literature. Our test series comes with detailed explanation and full performance report which will help you sort your weak and strong areas. Our test portal mirrors the NTA exam interface to give you real exam experience. Plus, after every test, you get your ranking in the All India Reader Board. Before we move on to the next tip, I want to take you to the Grand Hall, one of the largest hall in Oxford. It is a dining hall for the students of Oxford University and any Harry Potter fan can quickly identify that this hall inspired the Great Hall in Harry Potter. As soon as you step into the hall, you will be transported to the Hogwarts castle. This is the place where wizarding students and teachers dined. The hall is also said to have been Lewis Carroll's inspiration for the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Once inside this hall, you cannot help but notice the beauty of the hall. Grand paintings that hang on the wall, long rows of table and benches sitting between them, all topped with 16th century hammer beam ceiling to round things off. The paintings that you see on the wall are not just normal paintings. It is the paintings of the famous alumni. Look closely and you will discover that it contains the portraits of diverse range of figures from W.H. Auden to Albert Einstein, Lewis Carroll to Robert Burton. Quick fact, during the English Civil War, King Charles I lived at the Christ Church College and held his parliament in the Great Hall. And that is why this place is so beautiful and so classic. A goal without a plan is just a wish. And we do not have a magic lamp that would make all our wishes come true. So planning is very important in life. And planning becomes all the more crucial if you wish to clear your dream exam of UGC net. And this leads to my fourth tip, that is revolving around the topic of timetable. If you see, you have three months in hand before the next net exam. An ideal strategy would be to dedicate next 75 days in covering the syllabus and set aside the last 15 days for revision. So begin today and create a week by week study plan where you will cover all the portions that you missed in the previous attempt. And at the end of each week, review your progress. By utilizing these days, you are going to take your net preparation to next level. Also, I would advise you to start with the most difficult or boring topics first, while keeping the easier ones for the times when you feel lazy. Ensure to include timely revision in your schedule. Always remember, revision is the utmost mantra that defines your success in UGC net exam. You cannot leave this town without visiting the famous Oxford University Press. It is the largest university press in the entire world and its printing history dates back to the year 1480. Oxford University Press is the home of Oxford English Dictionary and this is where Alice's Adventure in Wonderland was first published. Today, it is the largest university press in the entire world and publishes dictionaries, English language teaching material, children book, journals, scholarly monograms, higher education textbook and school books. Hey, this reminds me as a quick trivia for English aspirants. Have you guys heard of the four musketeers of the Oxford movement? Let me tell you. W. H. Auden, Stephen Spender, Cecil Day Lewis, and Lewis McNeese are known as the Oxford poets. Why? Obviously, because all of them graduated from Oxford University. All these four poets were very, very close. They were like BFFs. 
while they were studying here. These, they started what we know as the Oxford movement. And that is the reason why they are known as the Oxford poets. And finally, we land on to the last tip that I'm going to share in my video today. Guys, in spite of the fact that your UGC net paper didn't go well and that there is a very low chance that you might clear net this time, I would want you to believe that you are national asset of our country, as important as those who secured GRF. Also, you should know that you are not just alone. There are many more just like you who are sitting in their houses and thinking that they are the only ones who will not qualify the exam this time and that their life is ruined. Let me tell you that one bad grade does not mean that your world has fallen down. Please do not remain sad about the poor performance, but instead concentrate on the mistakes that you have made and try to improve yourself on those areas. Remember, failure is the stepping stone to success. If you have failed, it does not mean that you are a bad student or you are not smart enough. It simply means that there are loopholes in your study method that you need to focus upon. This is an opportunity for you to learn, so don't waste it. You may feel low today, but I believe that you can rise and become the best version of yourself and defeat the odds that are stacked against you. Where are you going? The rest of the video the cross street that I'm standing at right now will transport any literature lover to Thomas Hardy's famous novel Jude Dobbscure. The novel is set in Hardy's fictional town, Christminster. You will be glad to know that Oxford was the inspiration behind Hardy's fictional town. Here in Oxford, you will find a place called Martyr's Cross, right here, situated at the junction of Broad Street and Park Street. This serves as the meeting point of Jude and Sue Brideshead in Jude Dobbscure. I cannot depart from Oxford without taking you to the most iconic building of this town, which is the Radcliffe Camera. What you see behind me is known as the Radcliffe Camera. It is the first circular library in England. It is almost impossible to walk near Radcliffe Camera without realizing its beauty and not get distracted by the grandness of the surrounding buildings. This distinctive shape can be seen from every corner of the Oxford. With that note, I would like to take your leave. I hope you enjoyed the tips that I shared with you while walking around this beautiful city of Oxford. That's it from my side for this video lecture. I'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.